I think it's time that we move on to a little Stellantis news. Um, can't get enough of Stellantis. They're quite the large uh, company. Yeah, so, I mean, still still kind of dealing with some electrification here first. I mean, right? Should we, should yeah, we talk about the, uh, we're, we're, we're the talking, Jeep? Yeah, we're yeah. going to talk about that. And Yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's talk about the Jeep. Right. What just happened with so, that Jeep? Well, they Which, just dropped first part of the month, so just relatively recent. Right. Um, they did a whole, like, we're going to get into this in a minute. They, t- they, they had their Dare Forward presentation, which basically is, it's kind of a fancy corporate term for a long, long-term long plan, like a 10-year plan, 20-year plan, something right. like that, right? So, right. so it's, about a, it's about a 10-year plan at this right. point, okay? Um, Carlos Tavares, who's their COO, um, changed direction on several things. But before we get into that, he announced their first fully electric Jeep. Right. And so... Now there was the four by E. We you've heard us talk about that before. They famously put like a monolith in the in the commercial, right? Um, but that's not one hundred percent electric, right? So they have revealed uh, basically renderings at this point. I don't think it's they don't even have prototypes, but uh, that it might be a prototype. But it's their first fully electric Jeep. They're calling it an SUV. It really looks to me more like a crossover. It is a crossover. Um, I don't care how you slice and dice. And that's yeah. just the renderings of what we're seeing. It's it a two-door. Co- well, with a hatch. Um, so it's a three-door, right? It, it, or does it have suicide doors? It's kind of interesting. Now, you know how the Hyundai um, Veloster yeah. has that third side door? Yeah. It suicide, looks like it yeah. may have have that. I see the door line. I see the panel line. Yep, you see, I that? see that? It has a yep. back window, too, so it would make sense that that's the case. So... Um, it's either going to be a, uh, uh, a three door and a hatch or a four door or a three door and a hatch or a, a four door and a hatch. So either a four door or a five door, okay. however you want to call that. Yep. It looks like, um, it's a hundred percent battery electric. Yep. It'll be the first Jeep SUV out there. When I yep. looked at the renderings, you know what I immediately thought? It's got heavy European styling, by the way. It does. Which yep. makes sense. It's Stellantis is involved with this. It makes sense for them to kind of... You can't go back and take away from what's there already, like the mm-hmm. Wranglers. The Wranglers have to look like the Wrangler, right? You can't yep. go mod those things up and make them look European because you're going to lose some, some, some customer loyalty there, I think. But with this, this is a different story. It's a different market that they're going after. It's a different person they're going after with this. Mm-hmm. So... For example, my kids, both my kids would be attracted to this vehicle. And I see why, because it's futuristic, it's modern, has a lot of those nice stylings of a European styling, more futuristic style vehicle. Yeah, but still has the kind of iconic Jeep. Got the iconic Jeep uh, front front end end on it. From their their SUV line, like their, you know, Yes, like your Cherokee, Cherokee, Grand Cherokee, et cetera. Now, when I looked at this thing, I thought, wow, it kind of almost looks like uh, Rover a little bit. It does. You know, I like, see that. what's yep. the, what do they call it? The LR3 yeah. or two or whatever, yeah. the little, right. little puffy yep. one or whatever. It has that look to it to me. Um, so depending on, you know, what goes into this thing is going to depend on the, you know, it's going to make the price either attractive or, you know, we don't know if it's entry level or what yet. Well, but. now there, uh, along those lines, since you mentioned price, you mm-hmm. know what kind of surprises me? What's about that? this and I'm guess I'm guessing a little bit here. Mm-hmm. But I feel like they went with this platform and size first mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. appeal to more consumers and maybe to get more range out of a lighter vehicle. I if I were Carlos and and I don't know everything Carlos knows and have access to all his information. I would probably be more in the school of thought to start with my luxury flagship line mm-hmm. be, and absorb the cost there first and mm-hmm. then let that R&D trickle down into the smaller line. I would have started with the Grand Wagoneer. 
which they already alluded to an electric version several years ago. It's funny you say that because we're going to get into something here in a bit about Stellantis and 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 yeah. sort of the revival of of one of the badges, and we'll we'll, we'll get into a little bit of that. I, but, I mean, I, I I think I understand why he's doing what he's doing, but I don't. I just don't know that I would have started here. Yeah. Well, here's the deal. Um, you're committed to putting electric vehicles out. Okay. Yeah. You got whether you like it or not. Whether you like it or not. Right. You. I mean, what? Two months ago, he was saying we can't do it. There's no yeah. way possible that we have the you know the, the money to, to to invest into what it's going to take to to do this right. And then here we are. You know, a couple months later, right. we're actually putting EVs out on the road or right. going to be putting them out on the road. Um, I think with this though, what he's done, Jeep is a very iconic name, as we all know, and it, it and, and it has impact globally, always has. Um, but with this, if you're if you're trying to sell an all electric Jeep, sell it, and and you got to sell it globally because you're a global supplier, you're mm-hmm. a global auto manufacturer, and how can I develop a vehicle that is has the Jeep name without really disrupting or, or screwing up what we already have, the history right. of what we have in the past, but I want to really sell it globally. How do I do that? Well, I create something brand new, slap a Jeep name on it, mm-hmm. call it a crossover or SUV or whatever you want, and, and make it an EV, and then guess what? You're going to move units. And we've had these discussions, Keith. Your stockholders, your shareholders, this looks good to them. Yeah. They're going to sell. Right. It's yeah. more it's more candy. It's more yeah. candy to put in the storefront. And that's exactly what I think that they've done here with this thing. Now, again, this is a situation where it looks like uh, all Jeep brand SUVs, they say, will offer an electric variant Version. by 2025. Yep. So which that's is, which right is interesting. The right. Yeah. So I think what they're doing is they're buying themselves some time with this one first. Mm-hmm. This is the platform we're going to go with. Let's try it here. Let's see what happens. And then we'll start squeezing in maybe the Wrangler and the Compass and those sorts of things. My thought is, is that they're going to be going towards those. They might even be getting rid of the Compass. You see what I'm saying? Right. And this takes its and place. And this takes, now, it, takes its place. I'm going to reread what you just said there okay. because I want to – this is where it gets, it gets interesting. Okay. This is – from Stellantis, this is their media website. This is a press release directly from them. This is straight from the horse's mouth, if you will. Okay, mm-hmm. this isn't some third-party website commenting. This is what Stellantis is telling the, the media. Right. All Jeep brand SUVs will offer an electrified variant by 2025. Right. All Jeep brand SUVs. Right. Okay. Not their not off-road. their road. Right. And they're also saying an electrified variant. Well, technically, the 4xe is an electrified variant, although it has less than 20 miles of range right. on the It's on the more of an side. electric assist than it is. But it's an electrified but variant. It's an electrified so, variant. So what, that, what they are not saying is that we will have an all-electric version of every one of our vehicles in the next three years. Right. They're you not be- saying that. Yep. You're going in and reading between those lines and parse those words, that's, you're exactly right. That is exactly what he is saying. Um, so good, good catch on that. Um, people, you know, it's all about marketing when it comes to (laughs) big announcements like this and you have to look into that and, and make sure your, um, your, uh, your, your, your information that you are absorbing is, is actually what you think you're absorbing. Otherwise you can, or you just watch us and subscribe on our show. And then I like that. I like subscriptions. Yeah, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell. We'll tell you when the next news breaks on this. We cover Jeep and Stellantis in general quite a bit, so uh, you've got a home here, everybody. Please and thank you. <laughs> right, right, exactly, man. So on the Stellantis subject, and we talked yeah. about this when it comes to electric vehicles. You know, they 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 came out with this Dare Forward twenty thirty. Um, I think we're gonna have to. I think we're gonna have to keep our eye on Carlos. I am too. I think that there's some. This big guy's things. been feeding us some red meat for the past six months that we've sort of had a little snack on, mm-hmm. and now he's starting to throw more comments out there, and yeah. it's uh, it's getting interesting, Jay. It is getting interesting, and you know, uh, they are a huge 
um, company that 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 has a lot of manufacturers under their under their umbrella. Um, Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, Ram, all these things, and they know that they've got to get it right with these what we call the U.S. domestic models. And um, so they're they're taking some steps with this new challenge. So Dare Forward 2030. Let's let's tell you about what it is. Okay, tell you what it is. Okay, um, it's a strategic plan uh, for the next decade um, that will drive Stellantis uh, employees. They say to be second to none in value creation for all of their stakeholders. I get that. Uh, they are committing to becoming the industry champion in the fight against climate change. And they want to, they have set their goal uh, of reaching carbon net zero emissions by 2038. Let me ask you something. Sure. That's 15 years. Hypothetical theoretical here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Chrysler, you've owned some Chrysler products, right? This isn't my question. This is all leading up to my question. Okay. But this is part of my question. So would you answer that question? I will. (laughs) I, I, I will. You have you have owned Chrysler products. Yes? I have I have owned some or junk. Whatever yes. you want to call them, FCA, yeah. Stellantis. You, you right? Okay. It was it was FCA. Yeah, at yeah, my okay. time when I owned so, Chrysler. Right. Yeah. So, do you do you feel like for a good while now? Was this a true statement? Do you feel like they've been kind of the whipping boy of the automotive mm-hmm. industry for a while? Pretty much. I mean, they've kind of been the butt of jokes. They've been. They've been trying so hard to be first, but they've just never quite been able to pull it off. Right. So now the Ram line, look, the trucks are awesome. I, I'm just saying as a general brand, everybody, right. Right. they've always kind of had this. Ah, they've been let in the room at the party, but it's kind of like Rick Moranis and Ghostbusters. Like they right. just kind of they let him in because yeah. he did everybody's taxes, but right. they didn't really. Right. All right. So. <laughs> yeah. So. Really, since here's my point. They need another Lee Iacocca. They really haven't ever been the same as they were under Iacocca. That was kind of the their their golden era. Would you agree? I do agree with that. Um, I think Lee Iacocca put them back on the map. Um, he did the same thing with Ford. I mean, you know, he's right. part of that success of the Mustang and you know those years. And then he comes. Unfortunately, and you and I have joked about this, but we joke. Because we experienced it, and Lee Iacocca had to come in at the, at the Chrysler level and deal with the '80s phenomenon of making boxy cars with terrible yeah. paint jobs and lousy emissions. <laughs> yeah, but it was right. during a transitional time for that the smelled like days. rotten eggs. Exactly. Parts. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, you could yeah. still get that. Uh, you could still get the uh, that you know Corinthian leather. Right. You know, even on that, you yeah. know. Well, he was smart enough to, again, here we go, hired a Hollywood actor. Right. That time, Ricardo Montalban. Right. Ziplane. Right. Ziplane. Well, that was her Bus. name, Are right. you impressed but, that I know the but names he, of both but the he, actors he from was, Fantasy Island? Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but yeah, yeah, they brought in a, uh, you know, somebody that was a professional at speaking to the camera to do yeah. their PR. So they need that again. They need somebody that's a visionary to sort of, lead them through these troubled waters. Right. I I agree with that. And I think that you also have to, when you do that, you have to use your current clout or prior clout Mm -hmm. that you had in the industry. And let's talk about this. Chrysler, Chrysler has been that, that whipped, whipped little, little guy in the corner, man. You know, it's two vehicles left in the United States. That's it. That's it. That's crazy. The 300 and the, is it the 500? Uh, no, the, the 300 and I think the Pacifica. Ah, yes. Okay. Yes. And I think there might have been a minivan. There's two, there's two, up to 2021, I think there might have well, been a minivan, a Voyager in there as well. Yeah, right, um, right, right, right. Okay. But yep. here's the thing. When Carlos made this commitment to the DARE 2030, to go all electric to, to you know that they're net zero he saw an opportunity with a failing badge but he also n- understands the iconic past that Chrysler has which is a luxury almost VIP type branded vehicle man and 
There are a few of those that are out there, but I think with the Chrysler badge, you can achieve that. So here's where we're going with this, guys. Um, they're going to revive Chrysler in an electrified way. And um, he, he says that um, the brand will be relaunched uh, with gorgeous new models. Um, he also said that, that no additional Stellantis brands are coming to the U.S. market. And on that list, obviously, is Peugeot, Citroen, um, as well as um, Opel and other others. Fine not so that. Right. Fiat, they, for example. They've got to fix what we've got first. Now, the Fiat, that's, this is, boy, oh, boy. This is a great example. So I had a, I had a, I had a girlfriend in high school uh, had a Fiat Spider convertible, mm-hmm. right? True Italian roadster. Right. Right. Uh, with all its quirks and, you know, odd clutch and the whole deal, right? Right. Fiat basically today is not, it's just, it's just the name. Right. There is no, there is no congruence between the cars that used to be Fiat's and these cars that they're doing today that are, right. have that badge on them. And, uh, he's basically, yeah, he said, you know, we still have to think about how we make the Fiat brand rebound in the United States. I mean, you can start by having them not suck. Right. That would be, you know, like they're just, what are they? I mean, it's just right. a little tic tac of a. Look, they, I think that the Fiat 500, that, that model, that brand, I think it well, failed miserably in, in the U.S. because who, I, let's face it, many, many. Right. Won Who, that who's your audience, the, right. right? So you're going to go into the small, right. the, the mini, you know, no pun intended market. Mm-hmm. You've got Mini Cooper, who has a very strong, we've owned one, you own one. That's a solid car. It's owned by BMW. Right. Uh, then, I mean, there's a couple other competitors in there as well, but but Abarth has one or Abarth has one, right. I think. Right. Um, this is really the... It's the last choice on a lot of people's list, right? In, in that car class, I think they're going to lose that. I think that you just got to give up away. on that. I think Make it will it... go away. And I again, I think this tech, the technology that they're moving forward with, this Chrysler brand, the Bring yeah. Back Chrysler Electric, is gonna is gonna be a win win situation for them. Now, can I offer a? Here's how I would say Fiat sure. Fiat in the United States if I were if I were Carlos. Go ahead. N- not saying I'm trying to tell you what to do, Carlos, but I'm also. I am saying that we've got a pretty good track record here on the counter show of calling things that either could or should or will happen and having those things go really well. Would you agree with that, Jay? Yes. All right. So this is this is my humble uh, suggestion to the Fiat platform if you want to rescue it. Right. Okay. Step one, throw everything you've done out the window and go EV. Step two, make a roadster. Step three, corner the EV Roadster market for convertibles so that, like the Mazda, the Nissan Z Roadster, everything in that price point, but you've got an electric version right. of a two-seater. There you go. Like the old Fiat, but a modern electrified Fiat with lots of luxury right. on an EV platform, mm-hmm. and that's where you win. Yeah, absolutely. I we're saving the planet. You're man. already what you're you're thinking. Where can I go pre-order one of these? I'm, right. I'm, I'm on it, man. I'm on it. But you know that. Uh, look, let's let's talk about what what Chrysler what he did reveal, which is well, they've revealed recently was the uh, it's the 2025 year model Chrysler Airflow. It's a concept vehicle right now, um, but it is a, a starting a estimated starting price at around 50 grand. That is as of today, but it is a VIP. In my opinion, luxury crossover is what it is. Ford Mach E, Tesla Model Y. Yep. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's that crossover. You know. Um, oh man. Ah, here we go. Peer pressure in the automotive industry. Got to do what everybody else is doing. Yeah. Ah. Well. You, or or you come out with something original. But I know that's a big risk because nobody gets fired for buying IBM, right? As the old saying was. I'm with you on that. This is true. Uh, this is true. I don't know, man. So, well, good luck to Carlos and the Stellantis family. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing that that Chrysler Airflow come out, and I'm I'm kind of happy to see Chrysler 
come back and I'm also excited about the Jeep and this whole new, you know, dare 2030 thing, which again, <laughs> they said two months ago that they Yeah. Were, so let's, yeah, let's, let's comment on that just briefly here. So yeah. he came out a couple months ago and yeah. said, look, you guys, these are unreasonable expectations. We don't have the budget to, that it would take to convert our platform to a full EV. Right. And we think there was some truth to that. And we even said at the time, like the current generation of EVs is really just a transition, you know, until we get solid state and all that. And pretty quickly here, he's really, he's changed direction. It's a 180. Yeah. It's a complete 180. I mean, you know, for those of you living on this planet who's been paying attention, um, yeah, he, he kind of really surprised us all with this. I mean, it looked like to me or sounded like to me that he just wasn't going there. It's almost like what we heard um, from the Bosch CEO about, mm -hmm. you know, uh, not buying into the whole electric vehicle movement. I get yeah, it. And it's even, a, even uh, was it BMW did the same thing? Same They're thing, like, This man. is not, we're this not going to go where all we're in. Going. And, but, yeah. but now guess what? I mean, I think, I think with recent events, um, you know, global events that are, that, have occurred and are occurring um, with the cost of fuels. Um, I think it definitely highlights a moment in time for us at this point to really consider, are we going all in or are we not? And mm -hmm. either way, you've got your challenges. Either way, you have your challenges. Um, again, for all of you out there, you know, you, you gasoline engine lovers, we love them too. You can't beat them. They're awesome. Um, but we're at a different phase in, in time right now where things are changing. I don't think those gasoline engines are going to go away for a while. Uh, again, the goals that are set by these companies of, say, by 2025, 2030, 2038, those are nice goals to set. That is going to continue to change. They're going to count get, on your short-term short, short -term memory. Short that's memory. exactly right, yeah. and that's how it works. Talk to us in 10 years. We'll see where we're actually at. Um I hope that some of these companies can actually achieve the goals that they have put in place because that, that would mean then that they have been very successful at what they're doing. Right. Yeah. And that remains to be seen. There's a lot of promises being made and a lot of models coming out. GM is at the forefront right now. Them and Ford, Ford closely behind with the number of models that they're going to be putting out over the next five years. So we shall see. But you got to stay tuned to us here at the Parts Kind of Gurus in order to, to, to be informed of all that stuff. So make sure you go over to parsecountyguru.com and click that podcast link, uh, subscribe to it, go to youtube.com forward slash parsecountygurus and hit that subscribe button, turn it from red to gray, hit the notification bell for any videos that come out. 